Hello, this is Dr. Ray Tahiri, and this is a relatively short video to clarify few concepts related to hardenability and Germany test. Uh, I have to admit, it, it is a rather complex um, concept, and sometimes students uh, have problem to recognize different terminologies and the use of uh, Germany charts. So first of all, the beauty of the Germany uh, charts, which been created by Walter Germany, um, is that it correlates the cooling rate, which is a little kind of not tangible concept, to a very quantified measurement, which is the distance from Germany head. So the Germany itself is a standardized uh, test for one inch bar. This is the specimen, exact shape, size, diameter, length. And this has been cooled in a very specific environment. Uh, the apparatus looks like this. So this comes with a half an inch uh, water jet with a certain temperature the pressure and so on so this specimen uh, regardless of the actual alloying elements as long as it's a ferrous alloy uh, relatively it has the same thermal conductivity so the same cooling rate uh, regime applies to uh, the distance from Germany head so the further we go in this direction obviously the cooling rate decreases here is the highest cooling rate at this end is the lowest cooling rate that's one now the next is when you go to the actual germany charts so in x-axis we have the distance from the germany head this is the millimeter, or it could be also per inch, both of them. Obviously, this is linear, and on the other side, we don't have it here, but um, in the next slides, you will see that this is cooling rate, either Celsius per second or Fahrenheit per second, and this will not be linear. And then this is the hardness. Obviously, students should realize the harder the material is, that refers to the higher percentage of martensite. Martensite, it is the hardest possible structure you can get in ferrous alloys. Uh, that's one. The second important uh, finding in this chart is the faster this hardness drops, that represents the fact that this material is not hardenable at a slightly slower cooling rate we will not get martensite therefore the nose of the TT diagram is not been shifted to the right side if you really for example thinking about 1050 this is the 1050 hardness you can see only at the very very fast cooling rate it means it goes from austenizing temperature to room temperature maybe in a second you can possibly get martensite. So such a material, we define it as not very hardenable. Versus if you have 4340, so you can see that at almost every cooling rate, which is any Germany distance, you relatively get a very high hardness. That means 4340 at very slow cooling rate, still there is a very good possibility of getting 100% martensite. So this refers to a very hardenable alloy. Uh, next, we're referring to the distance in Germany and actual cooling rate. So closest, we have highest cooling rate, the most distance, roughly around two inches plus, you have the lowest cooling rate. And here is a actual Germany uh, chart. So again, you have the millimeter, 
these are the distances from the Jomini head per millimeter per inch and on the other side you have the cooling rate in two different units and here we have the hardness for example all these alloys they have same carbon content different alloying elements obviously we have different carbon equivalent so among all of them 4340 is the most hardenable 4140 next and so as the other ones so one important um, note is that carbon increases the hardenability of steels more carbon you have the more cementite percentage you have and cementite percentage uh, will translates to the number of the needles of cementite in martensite structure more needles you have harder structure you have that's one uh, concurrently higher carbon promotes a higher hardness hardness is a quality of the material to resist plastic deformation under compressive load you have an apparatus it has a tip you press it through the material the bigger the indentation the softer is the material hardness refers to any materials glass has hardness plastic has hardness wood has hardness but hardenability does not reply or refers to every material only it can be applied to the materials can transform to martensite so the next slide is interesting also this comparison of alloy 60 uh, sorry 8600 with different carbon content you see lower the carbon content you have less hard uh, hardenability and you have less hardness so this shows that the carbon content affects both of these two uh, qualities very interesting uh, slide so this shows uh, the relate the uh, distance from Germany head we have one two three four distances relatively very close to the Germany head a little more distance more and much further distance so you can see that a it's so fast that you don't meet the formation of perlite so you get 100% austenite this is the transformation this from here to here is the time and because you get 100 percent martens you have very high hardness you go to point b which is a little bit distance or more distance from the germany head you have a significant drop right away you can say that this alloy is not very hardenable and the reason is when i go a little further a little slower cooling rate i meet the uh, perlite start I get some perlite I get some martensite but eventually you have significant drop in hardness and for these two points you will get fine perlite and coarse perlite as soon as you see something like this as a Germany um, uh, chart you can say this material is not very hardenable so the next thing that uh, is very important it is the fact that Germany is for one particular geometry that is one inch bar four inch length different alloys but this is maybe is not the case obviously there are a variety of uh, shapes square uh, you may have you know hexagon shape and different cross sections so we limit our discussion to a circular bar or rod but different diameters how do we use the original Germany chart which has been created for one inch diameter bar and ex uh, tended to different sizes so for example 
these are the two very useful uh, charts this chart shows the Germany distance again the same x-axis cooling rate and in here instead of uh, the hardness we have the diameter of the bar so we have a bar in this case we have one inch two inch three inch four inches and then of course we have different location in the cross section so just for simplicity you go one two three four location at the center which is the slowest cooling rate half the radius three-quarter radius and at the surface which is the highest cooling rate so we can see for example if I have a two inch bar and I want to know what is the cooling rate of a two inch bar at the center you go two inch center is become equivalent to the Germany one inch diameter bar with a distance of 10 millimeter or you are somewhere around here so again this is very hard to use this is neither logarithm nor um, linear so it's very hard to get these we stick to this Germany head so therefore a two inch bar at the center no matter what material is because the thermal conductivity are pretty much the same it's it's cooling as if you have a bar of one inch 10 millimeter from the um, Germany head and then I go back to this let's say for example this is 8640 alloy 8640 is here 10 millimeter I go here and you can say okay the hardness is around let's say um, 52 so this is how you calculate it was two inches not one but I use these two charts uh, to get the value and by the way this is for water this is for oil oil has less heat dissipation agitated water agitated oil so cooling rate in water for the exact same specimen the at the same uh, distance of the center is higher give an example 50 millimeter roughly around two inches uh, diameter at the center is 10 but here two inch at the center is 15 at the surface it's, it's almost like a, maybe two here the surface is about seven or eight so this is for a less uh, H factor media which is uh, it's agitated oil so and then the next important thing is how do we uh, plot the cross section hardness profile so this is very important so in this case all we need to do is we first define what is the diameter of our bar we pick four locations center half three-quarter and surface to respect to the cross section and then we calculate or get from the chart what are the cooling rate at those spots for that bar we know the alloy we go to the alloy that particular alloy that uh, chart and then we find the hardness let's do it for 1040 by the way not very hard neighbor material so two inch bar right here two inch bar this is the cooling rate of course in this particular slide this and this have the same scale not necessarily the case you read this whatever is that and then you go to maybe next page or next slide or uh, next chart and then you get the correspondence for the simplicity we made it in a way that this and this to have exact same scales and just you know uh, above each other so this is the cooling rate this cooling rate for this alloy give me this hardness this hardness is here so the next one is uh, you want to do this for example uh, in a surface you go from here and here and then this goes here surface center 
two more points required i go here three quarter find the hardness from here i go i put it here this one more point and then i do for a uh, half of the radius and you can do it here obviously uh, in industry you can have more than four points you can have 10 points every 10 percent and in this case you will have 10 points here or nine points here nine points here and one point here so you will get a more coherent and consistent um, uh, graph so this is for one alloy what about the comparing this alloy for much more hardenable alloy which is 4140 exact same thing except in this case here everything we set here you apply for 4140 for example this and obviously by looking at this you can see right away 4140 is much more hardenable because the drop of the hardness profile is not significant it means we get almost everywhere a uh, martensite versus here that is definitely coarse perlite fine perlite maybe some bainite and here is martensite next thing is comparing the same alloy two different sizes you realize that the bigger the diameter it become somehow less hardenable because bigger the diameter uh, more heat dissipation a lower cooling rate there is a chance that you will not get the same structure even at the surface of the same 4140 you can see the hardness is higher than here you might say wait a minute they are all you know putting in the water they are cooling at the same rate but they are not the same rate because there are more heat as would be dissipated from the specimen with a bigger geometry and diameter so it's uh it's really required to uh a little bit of review so this concept you know you, sh you should you know let the digest is not really uh self-explanatory you have to think about it so i hope this uh, short video uh helped my students to understand the concept of hardness hardenability and later on we talk about weldability which is in a sense the opposite of hardenability something is very hardenable because when you weld it at even a slower cooling rate you may get martensite which is a dangerous uh, structure when it comes to welding you want to avoid uh, formation of martensite when you weld for that reason usually alloying alloyed al, uh, alloys they have some alloying elements because they're hardenable you have to be careful when you weld them that's why you use pre and post heat treatment to avoid the formation of martensite in heat affected zone thank you